comic tonight. Quentin just gave you all your time back. That was nice. Uh, another big round of applause for Quentin Johnson. Right now. I still have no idea why he's mad at Matt for telling about his Christmas. I know. Uh, we have one more comic for you tonight. Uh, before I get to that, again, thank you so much for coming out tonight and supporting uh, local comedy here in Alaska. Big round of applause for yourselves, everybody. <laughs> the show. Uh, I don't know what else. Oh, if you like comedy, come back tomorrow. Scare Scribbles is here on this very stage performing improv, improv comedy for $10. $10? How is that possible? They don't pay us. So it's really easy <laughs> to uh, come out here and do improv comedy here on stage for you. Uh, that, 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 uh, yeah, that's all. How about one last comic tonight? Her name is Cass Smiley. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the majority of these comics come uh, to me, at least, from what I know. They do uh, open mic at Coots on Sunday night. So if you like what you saw here, you want to see this again, come back here. That's awesome. <laughs> and you want to see it for free, apparently, go to Coots on Sunday night at 8 and see these same guys on stage, guys and women, on stage there. Uh, I believe from what I know, because she came late, I didn't get to talk to her, that Cass actually hosts most of those uh, performances over at Coots. So go see her and them Sunday nights at Coots. Otherwise, a big round of applause for the last comic for this evening. Uh, Cass Smiley, the best female comic in town! <laughs> Hi guys, how's it going? Yay! I'm excited! Hey, that was very nice of you to mention that we do comedy at Coots. I didn't know if I could say that or not, but uh, I'm glad you did, not me. Uh, so yeah, like you said, we do comedy at Coots most of the time, so I'm very happy to be here in front of you guys telling these jokes. It's very exciting. Usually I'm just in a room full of other comedians telling jokes. and. Uh, when you tell jokes to comedians, it's just like showing your shaved vagina to a room full of gay dudes. And, I'm like, Ooh, and they're really nice about it at first, and they're like, bitch, get that out of here. Move it along. And you're like, come on. And if you're like me, you're like, I worked hard on this. Look at it. I worked, I worked hard on it. I want you to look at it. The motto of that joke is that it's really hard to shave a vagina when you're fat like me. There's always one guy out there thinking, one guy who's like, nah, it's hard to shave balls. <laughs> it's not, you know why? I'll tell you, men can take their scrotum, children learn from this. <laughs> they can take it and they can squeeze their nuts into like a little ball and they can shave the circumference of the ball like that. You guys know you can do it. <laughs> Women can't just like inflate their genitals, you know, you just can't like <laughs> blow them up. Because if we could, then your mother would be the scariest human being in your entire life. You understand? Every time you ever sassed her when you had your friends over, you threw a tantrum at the grocery store, she'd just be like, ah, 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 mm -mm. <laughs> And you would run for it. You would do the dishes forever. You'd do whatever mama told you. <laughs> right? If women could inflate their genitals, Hillary Clinton would have been president six fucking times by now. <laughs> Pufferfish, 2016. <laughs> Just kidding. I vote Republican. <laughs> Just joking. I don't vote. So. I'm a felon. I'm a felon. I'm not allowed to. They took it away from me. Oh, you're so sensitive. Thank you. I did a really bad thing to become a felon, so you shouldn't go home. Uh, I love doing shows. Uh, people always with nice women, and there's a town is full of them. They like to think that I'm pregnant when they come up to me and they say, Oh my god, you're expecting! In their best Minnesotan accent. They're like, When are you giving birth, eh? And I'm always like, oh, I need to drink like a whole drink. Like, okay, hold on. I'm giving birth tomorrow. You guys want to buy the next round of shots? I'm trying to save some money for the baby's rent. Yeah. And I'm never pregnant, you know. Never, it's never real. This baby drinks a lot, though, is what I would say. Because he's an Alaskan. Really, he's a Mexican. <laughs> My dad is not proud of me. I'm not really pregnant, but if I were, I'd be like a pregnant stripper. 
You know, that's what I would do. I would try to be doing this. I would take this body and I would go to the bush company. I'd do a little bit of this. And I would get away with it for like nine to 10, 11 months <laughs> until the, the, the regular guys start to notice. And they're like, hey, you're not pregnant. You're just fat and ugly for no reason. We want all our money we shoved into your non-human built vagina back. We want it back. Our salary's all up in there where there should have been a baby. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not really a stripper, but if I were, and I think all strippers should do, take this idea. So take it and run with it, girls. Uh, okay, she said, okay. Okay. <laughs> take uh, if, I, if I were a stripper on my period days, my heavy flow days, I would dance to ACDCs if you want blood. <laughs> like, right? Like, rockers, yeah, if you want blood. And then I like, pull out my tampon and like, Woo! shoot, you got it! And throw it across the room. Somebody back there actually ducked like I threw it. I started it's Panama if I didn't throw a real, calm down. I would make zero dollars as a stripper. Maybe like five bucks for a weird dude in the back. Keeps collecting my tampons month after month after month. Really good. Uh, a lot of people ask me, Cass, why do you look like that? And I'll tell you why. So it goes, I look like this because pornography has taught me that all delivery drivers are down to fuck. So I just kept calling and ordering and calling and ordering until a couple guys came inside a couple times. Okay. Just kidding. I do have a relationship with my McDonald's drive through boy, though, over on Northern Lights uh, in Arctic. He has a crush on me. He keeps saying things like, oh, back again today, huh? And I was like, oh my god, he loves me. He thinks I love him, but what he doesn't know is that I just love nuggets and orange soda. That's it. But really, I figured it out. I think I read too much into things. He was just actually like, back again today, huh? Because he was surprised I'm still alive. Like, he's like, I cannot believe at this point you're still alive. You better be nice to her. Well, the other day I went to order McDonald's, I had this cold sore on my mouth, and I was like really bummed out. I don't like people look at it, so I was like, don't. Because cold sores are like a billboard for your face that just says, I make bad decisions with my mouth hole. <laughs> Who needs that in their life? Not me, I don't. I got a cold sore from kissing my lesbian lover in the second grade. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It was the eighth grade. We were very experimental. Uh, I like to rub it all over the microphones wherever I go. Thanks, Snow Goose. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, a comic uh, that should not be named tonight. So, uh, him and I smoked some reefer earlier. Some weeds. Some tweeds. Some trees. And uh, I don't want to say his name. Nate. But uh, he told me, you know, weed makes bad, you make bad decisions on weed. Uh, and I didn't believe it was true until he tried to sell me some acid. And I was like, yeah! He told me it was acid, but in reality, it's just like a paper towel that he like, peed on. And he cut it up into little squares, and he told me to put it on my tongue for 30 minutes. And I did. <laughs> Stick to reefer, kids. It is way easier. Way, way easier. Uh, mushrooms, you love to do mushrooms. You guys ever played the mushroom game? Of course not, because I invented it. Mushroom game goes like this. You take a random house, like a random dose of mushrooms, just like a handful, like a scoop, and you eat them at a house party full of people you don't even know. Then you